nice out today. End of January here. It's like almost 50 degrees out. I figured I'd get out, do some hiking, play with the camera. Alright, this is really awful hard to sit on. So anybody's been watching my vlogs knows this sound. And this sound. So I got this guy. And so I don't know if you can see it all that well. If you can see it, this little fuzzy guy right here. It's a lapel microphone. The wireless lapel microphone. I got the transmitter in my pocket. The receiver's up here on the camera. And I got this big furry thing on here to block the wind sound, so hopefully it gets rid of the wind sound and gets rid of that clicking from the autofocus, which was the ticking noise, which is kind of annoying too. I've been getting kind of sick of that myself. <laughs> I gotta do something. So, we got some good clouds out today too. Hopefully, we can maybe possibly get a good time lapse in. Need some birds too. Maybe I can get some bird shots in. Yeah, that's, that's great. I'm like scratching my leg at the back. Yeah, I'm really hoping his audio comes out good because I'm like kind of new to this wireless microphone. I'm not new to microphones or audio, but I'd be paid like $12 for this thing like literally off Amazon. <laughs> $12. You get the, the mic, the transmitter, the receiver, a couple batteries, which I'm not too keen on. They look like they're pretty Chinese. Uh, I mean, it, I wouldn't normally buy something like that, but for 12 bucks, I mean, come on. <laughs> Plus it gives you options too. I had like a different microphone, like a shotgun microphone. I could plug that into the uh, receiver as well, or the transmitter rather. Dialing it in is like proving to be tricky. Seems like it's either too loud or too quiet. They recommend it's not made for use with DSLRs though, so can't really fault the manufacturer or anything like that. But when it's too quiet, you get like excessive hiss. When it's too loud, the voice is distorted. I mean, that's just my initial impressions. Uh, I haven't had too much time with it. This is like the first time I'm out with the thing, so it's kind of like a review on that. It's the Pile PWMW something I can't even remember. <coughs> yeah, it's not on there. I don't know. It's the one you always see on Amazon for 12 bucks. You got the special wire that comes with it, adapter wire, anyways. Not comes with it, but I had to purchase it. So here's my new rig here. ADD ZDO Z Grip Pile Wireless Lav Mic Transmitter. <laughs> My cheap Quantaray tripod. <laughs> yep. It's pretty much the Amazon.com freaking rig. It's the first time taking her out. Not too bad for actually lugging around. It's it's not really as heavy as it looks. I think my backpack's a lot more heavier. I got another my 5D and two more lenses in there. My telephotos, Canon L's. Nice thing is I could take the top right off. Sometimes. And I could run and gun like this. Well, like this rather. Yeah. Well, let's get moving. Kind of hard to see, but there's some like really cool looking icicles over there I'm trying to get to. And somehow I gotta get through here. <laughs> some cool rocks and stuff up here. Two down for 
check. Oh, don't slide down the hill. Please. I beg you. Gotcha. Oh, this is neat. This one hanging down. He's a lot scarier looking out here. He's just way over on those cliffs over there. He's he's closer back here. That's where I'm trying to get to. I'm gonna get some good shots. Let's go. Hopefully we don't get killed. The system is capable of good audio, not great audio. You probably sweeten it up with some EQ and compressor, but it does give you a nice bass signal to work with. Keep the mic stationary. Find a spot on your subject that won't move. I made the mistake of clipping to my jacket collar, not my shirt. The jacket collar flopped around and unbuttoned, creating distance between my mouth and the mic. This caused the signal levels to drop in the video. Bad idea. Bring headphones or earbuds to monitor your audio. I like to hear my audio levels as well as see the meters. The camera speaker sucks outside. It's too small and too quiet to hear. Which leads to my next point. Set up before you leave. Monitor in the field. Here's how I should have did it. Turn the transmitter all the way down to the small end of the arrow. Slide your finger to the edge of the wheel. Move where your finger touches to the top or middle of the wheel. I call this one revolution. Do it again is two and so on. You should get about 8 to 10 revolutions depending on your finger size and how far you turn the wheel. 4 to 8 seems to be the sweet spot. 1 and 10 seem to have hiss, so try to stay away from the extreme ends of the dial. I did the video at about 3 or 4. Set the transmitter volume to 4 revolutions. Set the camera recording levels, or gain, to halfway to 3 quarters. Plug in headphones to the camera to monitor. Hold the mic just below your neck. Check the mic by speaking. The camera's level should peak at 75% of the meter. If it's 100%, cut back on the camera gain until it peaks at 75 to 90%. If it's less than 75%, click it up till it's good. Watch the audio level meter as you bring the mic upward and downward against your chest, toward and away from your mouth, talking as you would on camera. Not too loud, not too quiet. Listen for distortion and clarity. A good spot I found to place the mic is three fingers below the collarbone divot. This guy here. Place three fingers at the base of the collarbone divot and you'll feel a rib lump. Place the mic in the center of that lump to a finger's width above. This is the best spot I found for mic placement. But try experimenting. If it distorts, turn the transmitter down one revolution. If it sounds muffled, try turning it up one revolution and rechecking the mic. When you're happy, record a video. Play back and monitor with headphones and listen for distortion, clarity, and hiss. When you're happy with your levels, put a piece of electrical tape over the transmitter wheel to keep it from turning. Now you're ready for the field. So what are my settings for the ADD after following these steps? I got the transmitter pack set at about 8, and I got the camera set at about 43-45% to 45 on the gain. It still peaks out at 75%, but I'm pushing the transmitter harder and using less camera gain. We'll see how it comes out in the next vlog. Interference. What can we do about interference? When I received the system, the receiver antenna was coiled up into this cool looking noose. I decided to leave it this way for convenience in the woods. From what I heard, you only need to uncoil it for range between the transmitter and receiver. But if the interference continues, I will try uncoiling it. Turn your phone and camera Wi-Fi off. My ADD has built-in Wi-Fi to use with the Canon Connect app. I wasn't using the app, but I'm not sure if the Wi-Fi was turned off in camera when I was hiking. This could be a possible source of interference. Another would be my cell phone itself. It's constantly sending and receiving data wirelessly. If you ever used a cell phone next to a Marshall full stack, you know what I'm talking about. Guitar cables can act like antennas sometimes, picking up cell phone and radio noise. Shielding mod. Although the system is wireless, there's still a cord running from the mic to the transmitter. And as we've already seen, touching the cord introduces a fair amount of noise. One thing we can try is wrap the cord with electrical tape to thicken up the shielding. 
Another mod I think it might be worth trying is if you have an old broken guitar cable, cut it to the length and then slice it lengthwise. Put the mic cable inside that, seal it up with electrical tape. Not exactly a pro setup, but you shouldn't be using a $12 wireless mic for that anyway. And lastly, I hope I shouldn't have to tell you this, but don't scratch yourself on camera. Apparently this causes the unit to freak out with disgust from your unprofessionalism. So fight the urge. Bring batteries. Surprisingly, the Chinese batteries held up and still have enough power for me to narrate this section of the video. I'm still using the manufacturer's batteries, so it looks like they exceeded my expectations. I did bring extra batteries and recommend you do as well. Wind muff. I bought a five pack of wind muffs on Amazon also, but unfortunately I think I bought the last one. They were from a seller called eBoot Online and fit nicely onto the mic. I haven't seen any shedding and leave it on the mic at all times. Definitely work to block the wind sound. The system does come with a foam spit cover though. Connecting to the camera. As you can see the receiver connects with a quarter inch mono plug. The camera accepts an eighth inch stereo plug. Hmm. Thank Christ for Hosa cables. If you've been doing audio for a period of time, chances are you have a cable or adapter from Hosa. I picked up the Hosa MHE-100.5 quarter inch stereo right angle to eighth inch stereo cable. Eighth inch is equivalent to 3.5 millimeter, by the way, if you see this when you're shopping. Although the cable is intended for a stereo quarter inch plug, it will accept and make the proper connections for the mono pile mic receiver. Keep in mind it will be a mono signal, recorded on only one side in the camera. You'll have to work some pan magic and post to get it centered. Alright, I just want to show you guys this quick. If you turn this on right, power light comes on. Turn this one on, power light comes on, right? Okay, turn them both off. If I turn this one on, no light. If I turn this one on, look what happens. They both come on. Pretty cool. The only problem is, if you turn this one off, look what happens. They both go off. You still have to remember to shut this one off. Don't forget. I already killed the Chinese battery that came with it. Which, by the way, I don't want to touch it by the end. It's a German tech. Right? <laughs> this thing is like already exploding and leaking. Isn't that lovely? Look at this little hole right here. And you look inside, you can't see it here. But it's actually a screw hole. What you do is you get yourself a tiny little screwdriver and you put it in there and you turn that and you can adjust the gain for the transmitter itself too. Should come factory preset pretty much, but who's to say? <laughs> That's it for the Pile Pro PDWM96 wireless lavalier mic system review. I will be using this to shoot my vlogs for as long as it lasts. Hopefully I get a few months out of it. It'll be worth the $11.64 I paid for it. If it dies next time I take it out, I'll smash it on a rock and film it for you. I think it'll be good for a few months. And in my typical vlog style, here's my footage from my hike to the bicycle cliffs. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Be sure to check out my other vlogs and leave a comment also. Thank you.